If you died today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? There are five things you need to understand before you can be saved and know you are going to heaven when you die. Number one, we have all sinned by breaking God's laws. If you believe that good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell, you'd be right. But how good is good enough? Because of this, you may be unsure whether or not you'll go to heaven when you die. You may be thinking, I've done good, but I've also done bad. I'm not sure if I'm good enough. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The truth is, no one is good enough. And if we have to get to heaven by how good we are, then it would be impossible. We all come short. In regards to heaven, the Bible says in Revelation 21, 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Just as there are rewards for doing right, there is punishment for doing wrong. One lie is all it takes to condemn you before a holy God. Number two, God is holy and must punish sin. In the first half of Romans 6.23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. Every day we sin against God, and our sins are so grievous in God's eyes that the punishment is eternal torment in a place of fire called hell. Our physical bodies die when it's separated from the soul and spirit. But going to hell is the eternal death of the soul. In Revelation 21.8, there is a list of sins that will send a person to hell. The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. You may be thinking at this point, well, I haven't done any of those. But then the Bible says, and all liars. I've lied before. What about you? All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is what we all deserve. But because of God's great love toward us, he has provided a way we can be saved. The second half of Romans 6.23 says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Number three, Jesus Christ took the punishment for us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Over 2,000 years ago, God was manifest in the flesh. He was born of a virgin and named Jesus. For 33 years, he lived a perfect life without sin so that he could die for you and me. He was beaten, mocked and spat upon. They placed a crown of thorns on his head and crucified him. When he was hanging on the cross, the sins of the whole world were put on him. Every sin that you and I have ever committed and will ever commit, it was as if he had done them. Then he died for us. His body was buried and his soul descended into hell to suffer the wrath of God in our place. But three days later, he overcame death and rose again from the dead. Then he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs and was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Now he is seated in heaven and will one day come again. The Bible says in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Number four, you must believe and receive the gift of eternal life. In Acts 16, 30 to 31, the question was asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't just mean you know what he has done. It means you trust what he has done to get you to heaven. 
Remember when I asked you the question at the beginning of this video, if you were 100% sure you would go to heaven when you die? If your first thought was, I hope I'm good enough, that shows that your trust is not on Jesus Christ to get you to heaven, but on yourself. Many people know what Jesus Christ has done for them, but they are still trusting their own works to get to heaven. It might be your church attendance, your baptism, taking the communion, doing your best to keep the commandments, or repenting of the sins in your life. No, being saved from hell is as simple as receiving a gift. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's impossible to work your way to heaven. So God offers it to us as a gift. A gift is something that is given to you for free. If you have to do any work for a gift, then it's not a gift. The one giving the gift is the one who pays for it. Jesus Christ paid for the gift when he died and rose again. The only choice you need to make today is whether to accept or reject the gift of God. If you simply believe and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, he will save you and give you the free gift of eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Number five, once you are saved, you are always saved. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Once Jesus Christ has given you eternal life, it can never be lost for any reason. Even if after you believe on Jesus Christ, you were to commit a sin as terrible as murder or suicide, you would still go to heaven when you die. Why? Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for all sins, past, present, and future. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Grace doesn't mean it's okay to sin, Sin still has negative consequences, even for saved believers. But it does mean that even if you do sin, you're still saved. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. You may forsake Jesus, but he will never forsake you. God cannot lie, and this is his unchanging promise to anyone who calls upon him in faith. So these are the five things you need to understand before you can be saved and on your way to heaven. Number one, we have all sinned by breaking God's laws. Number two, God is holy and must punish sin. Number three, Jesus Christ took the punishment for you. Number four, believe and receive the free gift of eternal life. And number five, once you are saved, you are always saved. If you believe what the Bible says, I would like to help you call upon the Lord right now. These are not magical words, but just an example of how you might express your faith to God. In your heart, you can talk directly to Jesus Christ. You may want to close your eyes and tell him something like this. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner that deserves death, but I believe you died and rose again for me. Please give me the gift of eternal life. I'm only trusting you to save me from hell. In your name I pray, amen. If you sincerely called upon the Lord, you can be 100% sure that you are going to heaven when you die, no matter what happens in the future. Not because you're good enough, but because a perfect and unchangeable God has promised and given it to you. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, from this moment onward, you have a choice to make. You can either use your life to serve God, or you can waste your life by serving yourself. Whatever choice you make each day, you will still go to heaven if you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior. But God not only wants to save you from hell, He wants you to do good works for Him. And so do we. 
This will determine your level of rewards in heaven. So what should you do next? You need to get plugged into a local Bible-believing church where you can get baptized, grow in your knowledge of the faith, and be part of the work of God with other like-minded believers. Get yourself a King James Bible and start reading it. If you live in the Sydney area, come and visit us and we can give you one. Otherwise, we can help you find a Bible-believing church where you live. For more information or to listen to Bible preaching, visit our website. If we don't see you at church, we hope to see you one day in heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.